What is it, Remy? I banged my nose on the door, sir. It's so dark in here. Well, why don't they turn on some lights? I'm the new manager of the Paris Opera House, not a bloody owl. I, I did tell Mr. Debian we were coming, sir. Not loudly enough, it seems. Now, come here. What about my nose? Bring it with you. Oh, oh this is intolerable. It's my first day here, and I'm being completely ignored. You're my secretary, Remy. Do something. Uh, how many steps are there, sir? I think they're five. Oh, six. Now, get up and turn on some lights. Ah, well done, Remy. You see how easy it is when you try. Come on, come on, you silly girl. We've turned the stage lights on for you. There's nothing to be frightened of. There, you see? Nothing. And don't go spreading silly rumours. There's a new manager due, and he's a pompous old... Debbie! Oh, good Lord. I'm awfully sorry, sir. We were expecting you later. That's quite obvious. Now, what's all this about? Oh, I saw him, sir. I saw him. Clear as anything. Saw who? What is she talking about? It's nothing, sir. Imagination. Allow me to present Miss Jam, a member of our corps de ballet. Mr. Richard, the new manager. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> she says hello. Oh, get up, girl, get up. I do hate fuss. In my previous capacity as president of the Northern Railway, I had it eradicated entirely. <laughs> And where's my son? We've lost my son, Raoul! Just taking a deco at the auditorium, Father. No need to panic. <sighs> Splendid, isn't it? Some of it. Personally, I always thought the Paris Opera House as being more... more... Bigger, sir. Quiet, Remy. Uh, Debian, why isn't it more... bigger? Well, um... It's the lighting, sir. Our man, Mauclair, turns on the gas, and the whole place is transformed. Yes, and speaking of lighting, Mr. Debian, that chandelier doesn't look too secure. I shall oh, tell you again, Remy. Debian, that chandelier doesn't look too secure. Well, I hope it is, sir. It must weigh half a ton. Precisely what if it were to fall down. Fall down? Our chandelier? You mean on all those seats there? Yes, all there, all there, or possibly there. Well, at least the cheap seats will be safe. <laughs> appear, Satan, appear! I am here! And who the devil are you? Well spotted, sir. It is the devil. Mephistopheles, actually, rehearsing for tonight's performance of Faust. Mr. Richard, the new manager. Oh, enchanted. How do you like the new entrance? The producer wants me to make this sudden surprise, supernatural, out of the air, from nowhere appearance. I think it's rather good. Incidentally, who's singing Faust this evening? I am. I always sing Faust. I only sing Faust. Well, I hope you sing it well. Sing it well? Of course I sing it well. I am singing it, aren't I? We all sing well here, sir. In fact, we've prepared a little musical introduction for you. Jam, jam, Come on. Jam, jam. Welcome, sir, I'm so delighted. Everyone is so excited. What we need is someone new. Just like you, to pull the sinking ship back into shape. And then we might forget the very dreadful way that really awful things go on here every day. And quite enough of that. You're, You're not, not supposed to rat. Slipped out, no, no doubt. doubt. Ignore him, dear sir. A word if I may, I've something to say. Pay attention there, close that door. Let's have some silence here, not a sound. Where, Where all the gods are gather round. I'd like to say, we'd like to say, include me too, unless you feel I'm in the way. Not at all, but let me speak. He's very chic, it's unique. We're at your service, devotedly. We're waiting with bait and breath. Your loyal troops, especially me. 
I want my staff to be a team to make me proud to be their boss. We will not half. Don't intervene. It's not allowed and makes him cross. I like your plan, so just say when. I'll help you pick your new recruit. Well done, that man. Ten out of ten. She loves to lick the boss's boots. You rotten beast. Get knotted, love. You am a tar. You're such a bitch. The true artiste is far above this sort of girlishness. That's right. They understand you perfectly. No. Nobody here would disagree And if they did, I'm sure they'd say Oh yes, they would sell right away We're the team from now on United as one We're all in the big army May I say on behalf, sir, of the artists and staff, sir We would hope that you keep us all in your employ They're so eager and loyal, they'll pamper and spoil any service at all, sir, call us a tweet boy. Do, sir, we'll be happy to help you out. Do, sir, you can't see the same as the same on it. It's the height of the season and the offer's the reason we're striving to see. It's a starting success to regard it as treason if it's any less. La, 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 me, 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 me. What a hit it will be. You can leave it to me if you pay him his fee. I'll do it for free. We're a team from now on, united as one. Well done, sir. Well done. Yes, I knew singing in the Stock Exchange Choir would come in handy <laughs> one day. Well, good luck for tonight. Uh, sir, sir, there's one tiny fly in our ointment, as it were, sir. La Carlotta, our principal soprano. What about her? She's lost her voice. Mm, jolly good. <laughs> mm. She's what? Lost, lost her voice. Oh, quiet, Remy. This is a catastrophe. The first performance under my management cancelled. No, Father. Uh, there's a new girl singing in Carlotta's place. Christine Dye. An admirable creature with the most exquisite voice. Christine who? Dye, sir. She's a chorus girl. A sir. chorus girl? Why wasn't I informed this is most improper? Who decided that an unknown, a mere chorus girl, should take the part of the great Carlotta tonight? Will somebody tell me? Well, it was the ghost. <laughs> Sir. Ghost. Did somebody say ghost? They did. You were not to learn about this place, Mr. Richard. We're a superstitious lot. Quiet. You'll upset him. And who the devil's this? <laughs> Madame Giry, sir. She's our chief box keeper. She's been here since the theater was built. You can't be serious. A ghost in the opera house? You will find out soon enough. Why do you think the last manager left? He's got a lot of pull around here as our ghost. Has he indeed? Well, haunting us is one thing, but recasting my operas is altogether too much. So you can tell him from me he's to watch it. Oh, and incidentally, I shall be attending Faust tonight. Reserve me a box, will you? Uh, that one will do. Box five? Oh, I, oh, 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 oh. I don't recommend it, sir. And why not, pray? Box five is reserved for the ghost, sir. It's always been that way, ever since the Opera House was built. This ghost and his friends seem to have a well or little racket going on here. Is there anything else we need to provide for him? Only his allowance, sir. His what? Oh, it's written into the lease, sir. Uh, apparently, this ghost is to receive an allowance of 20,000 francs a month. 20,000 francs a month? Who put that in the lease? Nobody knows. When it was first drawn up, it appeared, written in blood, in a strange, crabbed hand. <laughs> I see now why I was appointed to this place. What is required is the steadying hand that stamped out corruption in the left luggage department of the Northern Railway. And I mean to start immediately. In the meantime, I want that box tonight for me. Is that clear, Madame Giry? Oh, yes, sir. But don't blame me for what happens. <laughs> Ghosts, indeed. 
Come, Remy. I've never heard anything so, so outrageous. He'll find out, just like the last one did. You and your spooks, Madame Jerry. You are a caution. And you, you'll all find out. Just you wait and see. She has a point, my friend. Don't meddle. But I mean, ghosts? There are no such things. Oh, sh 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 sh. You hear that, Phantom? You don't exist. You don't exist. What was that? An echo, that's all. Are you sure? It didn't sound like your voice. You don't exist. <laughs> yes, of course. You don't exist. Oh, what does he mean? I don't exist. I exist, all right. Feel me. Certainly not. Oh, 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 feel me. Well, do I exist or don't I? For the time being. <laughs> it was. Only an echo, you know. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, come on, let's go to the bistro. It's your turn to pay. Christine. Oh, Ralph, if only your father didn't have this awful prejudice against chorus girls. I think it's because mother was one. But it's so unfair. Our love should be in the open for all the world to end. With. Don't fret, dearest. After tonight, you'll be famous and everything will be different. Famous? I don't think so. Oh, but everyone says your voice has improved amazingly. Yes. Yes, it has. So what's the matter? Nothing. Nerves, I expect. Miss Doyle! Dash! Where is the girl? At last, we'd better not to be seen together. She's on stage. I'll see you after the performance to offer my congratulations. Then get out of my way! Till then. But Madame Carlotta... I tell you, I wish to see this girl! Ow! Stop, bitch! You are the little nobody who thinks to take the place of the great Carlotta. No, madame. I wouldn't presume to do that. And yet, I have heard a lot about this newly discovered voice of yours. What are you? A witch that you could produce such an instrument from out of the air? I don't know, madame. It just happened. Well, listen to this. You may go on tonight. That is all. You cannot hope to be anything more than a disappointment. And afterwards, we shall see whether there is any more need of you. We are very overstaffed, they tell me. In fact, I make this prediction. The new manager here will feel he has too many mouths to feed and decide to make some savings. Beginning with your... Look out! Ah! Oh, oh. Oh. You seem to have a lot of friends around here, Miss Daae. Well, so have I. So have I. Box five, sir. There's no need to look so frightfully foreboding, Madame Shiri. Nothing's going to happen. No, sir. But when it does, I shall be over here. Uh, good evening, Remy. Uh, Miss, uh... <clears throat> oh, <laughs> I see. Uh, fingers crossed, eh? Always a fraught moment, this one, when we put on an understudy. <clears throat> ah! There you are. 
And I do hope this Christine Daae is going to be all right. Don't worry, Father. As soon as you hear her, you'll melt, just as I did. Faust by Charles Gounod. Yes. What's it about? Well, it's the well-known classic tale, Father. Oh, I see. Well, Faust, an old philosopher, sells his soul in exchange for youth and the love of the beautiful Marguerite. It begins with the old man cursing everything he once believed and deciding to poison himself. The sinful thing that invokes the devil. You saw the devil practicing his entrance earlier. Well, that's what worries me. Managing the opera house is one thing, but having to watch the wretched stuff. Quiet, it's beginning. Jammed in the pulley. Well, cut it down then. More light here. Where's Mo Claire got to this time? More of gas. And where is that understudy? I was just warming up. Oh, shut up. I have been shut up. That's the problem. I'm so sorry, S ladies and gentlemen. Be with you in a moment. How is he? He's rather dead, Father. How on earth did it happen? It was safe enough this morning. Look. There's a note pinned to the body. By George, so there is. Remy, what does it say? Pure silk, sir. <laughs> Not that one. That one. Oh. I don't exist. I don't exist. <laughs> oh, Christine, wait. Is that rope free yet? Yes. Then you can bring in the curtain. I'll give the orders, Raymond. We have a crisis. Debbie, you may bring in the... Curtain, uh... sir. So sorry, ladies and gentlemen, uh, but as you may be aware, a small technical difficulty prevents us from continuing tonight's performance of the thing. Uh, we shall, of course, replace the indisposed Mephi... Mephi... Escopheles! Bless you, as soon as possible, and continue the performance in a few days' time. I trust this is satisfactory. Oh, what is it, Madame Giry? I said I'd be here when nothing happened, sir. Give me those. As for you, Remy, I want you to get on to the coroner's office at once. I want this whole matter dealt with as soon as possible. Right. Well, these damn corridors all look the same. Oh, Jean, come here, quickly. Can you help? I can't find Christine anywhere. Oh, that's because she's in the star dressing room tonight, sir. Over there. Of course. Thank you. Calm yourself, my dear. Calm yourself. Why did it have to happen? The poor fellow killed himself. It is no concern of ours. Christine? Everything's ruined. I was going to sing tonight. To whom does she speak? There will be other nights. Carlotta's voice will not recover, I swear. But you will sing only for me in future, Christine. 
No! Yes, I will sing only for you. Then you will know that your soul is mine, and you must love me as only I can be loved. You will know that, Christine. I will know that. I will know that. The villain! Who is here? How dare she! Christine! Open this door! Christine Dyer! Christine Dyer, open this door! I demand that you open this door! Oh, 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 for God's sake! Will you stop playing that bloody piano? Thank you. <laughs> now, can you please tell me, is there another way into Miss Dyer's dressing room? Through the chorus girl's room. Thank you. <laughs> the chorus girl's room? She must have left while I ran around. I'll catch her. Locked. Uh, from the inside, but that's impossible. She... She was in here, talking with a man, unchaperoned in her dressing room. How dare she? Alone with a man, who is this creature? This gross rat who impertinently claims to love her. My beloved, she is stolen, and my rage a burning fury trampled in. And so, Christine, we are finished. Our love is over. I say it's over. Ended. How she repays me, alas, how she betrays me. She's all that's found in womankind, no, 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 no. I must calm myself and cast her out of my mind. Forget her, forget her, forget her. How dare she? How dare she? How dare she? Morning, 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 morning. Morning, morning. Morning, sir. Don't interrupt, Remy. Ever since the coroner ruled accidental death last week, it's been one beautiful day after another. Isn't it amazing what a difference daylight makes? Everything's so, so... Light, sir. For once, Remy, you are right. Everything's light. Everything's lambent, luscious and lovely. Well, almost everything. What is it, Madame Giry? I have a letter for you, sir. What? The postman too, are we, Madame Giry? I found it in box five. The usual place. The usual place for what? Good heavens. Remy, come here and listen to this letter. It's, it's sad news, sir. It's worse than that, listen. 
Dear Mr. Richard, I was most disappointed you saw fit to use my box on the night of the unfortunate Mephistopheles accident. His box, indeed. And look, the word accident's been underlined. Please see that it doesn't happen again. Please also see that Christine Daae sings the role of Marguerite when the production is resumed this evening. Do not fail me in this or you must suffer the consequences. Your obedient servant, O.G. O.G.? Opera ghost. <laughs> Sir. So, the rogue's trying his vile tricks on me, is he? <laughs> well, not for very much longer. Send for Miss Daae immediately. Oh, may I, sir? <laughs> I mean to get to the bottom of this, Madame Giry. No one swindles this here, oh, though I am in charge. You cannot possibly see ah, here she is now. Come in, Miss Daae. Have an appointment. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't allow you to... <clears throat> Mr. Richard. You're not Miss Daae. Miss Sue? I'm sorry, sir. This is the groom. The what? The groom, Will sir. you fetch Miss Daae? Miss Sue? He looks after the stables, sir. What stables? The ones we keep the effing horses in. Do me a favour, John. Are you mutton, Jeff, or what? I mean, leave it out. You're getting on me West Ham's. Any more of this, and I'm legging it down the frog and toad back to Oxton. Struth. Why is he talking in this extraordinary way? He's English, sir. We always have an Englishman to look after the horses. They get on so well together. What horses? The ones we keep in the stables. What's your game? Brain took a day off. You can't put on an opera with nothing but a lot of music and singing, sir. The public won't stand for it. You've got to have hundreds of extras, thousands of costumes, acres of scenery, 25 minutes of ballet, and horses. So we stable our own. And where precisely are these stables? Three cellars down, mate. Three? How many cellars are there? Five. Five? But we don't count the bottom one. Nobody goes down there. That's the one just over the lake. Lake? What lake? The underground lake this place was built on. How'd you get this job? It's where the secret police dropped the bodies during the last uprising. There's a manhole in the floor of the bottom cellar, and the lake is full of bones. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to see to the usher's soup. And I thought I was having trouble with Miss Daae. Miss who? Look, will you kindly come to the point and tell me why you're here? We're all right, then. He's pinched one of the horses. Who has? Who has? The ghost has. Caesar, me best white stallion. I eat his at it. Listen, you've just got one chance of prolonging your employment here. That is if you tell me the whole story. But in a manner befitting this noble establishment. Well, if that's what you want, mate. Lay last night. I'm in the cell as black as pitch The gas is out Old Moclair, the light in fellas Fast asleep Again, no doubt All at once There's this commotion Caesar's restless and disturbed Something's making him perturbed And in spite of no light I can see a weird sight Clinging on to Caesar's back Dressed from head to toe in black With a long flowing cape And a mask up to his foreign Galloping him down the corridor Is something really horrid Just a shape of Though I'm out of gas, I realise it has to be him. Am I getting through? I'm one of very few to see him. Then I'm away, legging it like hell. Mr. R, you should have heard me yell. No, Claire, are you there? Where you gone? Anyone? Everyone? A ghost. Right. On horseback. Correct. Galloping down the corridor. Got it. You're fired. Do what, John? Get out, get out, get out! Father, I must speak with you immediately. Not now, Raoul. But, Father, my life is a shattered ruin. It can wait. I thought I told you Miss to... Miss sir. Miss who? Will you go away? But you just sent for me, sir. Not you, you. Ra. Shut up. Get out. I'm off. Don't you worry about that. But you ain't firing me, see? I come in here to pick up me cards, cos nothing's going to get me down them cellars again. Nothing. Nothing. 
Nothing. Ooh. And now then, Miss Diary. Somebody's trying to make a monkey out of me. Somebody's trying to pull the wool over my eyes. Somebody is pretending to be a ghost. But I've seen through it, Miss Dye. Oh, yes. I believe this whole affair is a put-up job. A plot between you and your clique, your clack of friends, to see that you sing Marguerite in the place of the great Carlotta again. What do you say to that? It's completely untrue, sir. Raal, intercede for me. I don't understand you these past few days. You've been so cold, so cruel. Help me. I'm afraid I can't. You see, even my unfortunate son no longer takes your part. That will be all, Miss Daye. Your contract is terminated. You will leave the Opera House immediately. <laughs> oh, that is the end of that. As for box five, I shall use it whenever I please. It shall be my private box. <laughs> Ghosts indeed. Some people will believe anything. As for you, young man, I'm glad you've come to your senses as far as this girl is concerned. You've obviously been seeing her behind my back. She loves another. I was thinking of going to the North Pole. North Pole? Why? It's never been done before. Mm, I see. But tell me, father, what's put you in such a foul temper? No, I'll you were show perfectly you cheerful this morning. I'll show you why. Read that. Mm. Dear Mr. Richard, since you choose to defy me, I now give you clear warning. You must call back Miss Dye immediately and tell her she is to sing That's tonight. That's not the letter. She is to sing tonight or suffer the consequences. Remy, you were also reminded that my allowance of 20,000 francs for the current month is still due. Oh, gee, did you just put this letter on my desk? No, sir. Then there can be only one explanation. Miss Dye must have slipped it there. Quickly, Remy, after her. Oh, father, uh, but father... I tell you, there can be no other explanation. Are you, girl? Where's Miss Dye? She's not here. She's gone. She went out. She's not here. Ha. Ah, oh, father, as much as Christine has broken my heart, I'm sure she'd never deceive the management. Oh, you poor deluded boy. She's obviously a witch, an imposter. There may be another explanation, of course. Such as what? Oh, yes, ma'am. What? Well, the pressures of a great opera house, uh, all sorts of unscrupulous people become involved a beautiful and vulnerable creature that she is heaven knows whose influence she may have come under of course why didn't i think of it before somebody is manipulating her using her for his own ends well he shan't succeed oh, quickly jam where is she oh well she's probably gone to the cemetery sir the cemetery yes you see her father used to play the harp in the orchestra here until he died help and whenever she feels unhappy, she goes to pray at his grave and ask for advice. The poor child. I must go to her immediately. No, Raoul, come back. Never, father, unless it be as her husband. The blind fool! His mother would turn in her grave if she hadn't been lost at sea. We'll continue this investigation. Back to the office. I know where I'm going, Remy. I'm not lost. No, sir. Which way is it? Couldn't have told them that you'd have displeased him.
have left is a broken heart. Truly, my life is over now. My life is over now. Christine. Oh, Raoul, I thought I'd lost you forever. I'd been a fool, a selfish fool. I was jealous. Jealous? Of who? Of the person you sing for. How do you know about that? I followed you to your dressing room the night you ran off. And? I heard you talking to him. I, I didn't mean to eavesdrop, my darling. I simply have to know who it is. You may not believe me. I disbelieve you. Then I will tell you. It was my angel of music. Oh, Christine, you make fun of me. An angel of music. My father told me about him when I was little. There is an angel of music in heaven, he said. And when I die, I shall send him down to teach you to sing. And it actually happened. My angel of music came to me. And under his guidance, I've flowered, I've prospered. But, Christine, there is no such thing as an angel of music. Oh, but there is. There is. Only he won't appear while you're here. You must pretend to go away. Please, Raoul. For me? Well, very well. <clears throat> well, Christine, it's uh, getting late. Must dash. See you in the morning. Cherry bye. <laughs> I'll be uh, over here. Come to me, my angel of music. Sing for me. The opera house too. Coming from the very walls. And he teaches you, talks to you. Yes. In your dressing room. Usually, yes. Then, Christine, where were you? What do you mean? After I heard you talking to your angel of music, I went into your dressing room. It was empty. Nobody was there. So, where were you? I'm not sure. But you must know. How can an angel of your dreams just spirit you away? And to where? I tell you. I'm not sure. I'll leave me alone. You see, wait. Come back. An angel of music. An opera ghost. An unexplained death. Could these be related in some way? 
A child might believe in an angel, and a villain might take advantage of a child. She may be in some danger. I'd better think. Cheeky devil. Oh, are you all right, sir? Your face is all funny. Somebody just tried to kill me. Well, he came to the right place. <laughs> now look, he's riding a bloody great white horse clear across my cemetery. Well, he's not going to get out that way. He's heading straight for the wall. Over the wall? That horse will be seized, no doubt. Oh? And yes, by thunder, look. This stone's been moved, and the grave's empty. Angel of music, I think not, my fine friend. Here, wait a minute. I haven't got a minute. I must return to the opera house immediately. God knows what's going on there. But you're doing splendidly. And there's a Persian out front. He's come all the way from... Persia. Then I do not continue to croak in front of him. Uh, but, Diva, uh, uh, I'm sure we can solve this little problem, Diva. You couldn't solve dividing four by two, you short-ass little frog. <laughs> the jewel song is next, where the devil tempts Marguerite with a box of jewels. And I have to put them on while I sing. Have you any idea how difficult that is? To sing and move at the same time, order my carriage, or be in my dressing room. But with coming up to your next scene, I, what about your next scene? You can stick it up, you... Well, at least she spared us the medical details. She says she's got the nodules, but not her. She's had a threat from him. Her, if she went on singing, her future could be rather grim. And you keep your tummy torso out of this, you fat little faggot. What do you mean, little? I'm sick of all your prejudice. Then keep your big nose out of this. You know what you can come and kiss. It would be difficult to oh, kiss. Please, Diva, dear, they are plenty of tea. I cancelled one so recently. You really must go on for me, or I'll become a mockery. What do you understand? I do. Although my voice is dodgy. True. All right, I do it just for you. And you can go to sing it too. Me sing it. That'll be the day. Though someone should. If it will make. But who I wonder. Miss Diane. No, 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 don't run away. I'm sorry, sir, just passing through. I've come to clear my dress. And what a silly thing to do. How could we think of losing you? Stand over there, keep still. Yes, sir. Keep very quiet. I will, yes, sir. Going Shut up. Yes, sir. Now watch me make it up to her. Oh, Diva, dear. Oh, it's me. I do not need this. Which I submit, you mind the scene and just you. Miss Dye does the singing bit, we'll shove it in the pit. Oh, really, Mr. Richard? What? I... Want your job back? Like a shot? They shut up while I butter up our diva. Get the plot, your audience awaits. Their favorite scene of yours, so famous for the jewel song. 
which always creates tumultuous applause because your acting is so strong. She sings your favorite aria. They think it's you, etc. Your public yell and shout, Huzza! The biggest thing in opera. <clears throat> well, she sings like a toad. But if I sing Juliet in that new opera by Gugnor, and this decrepit cretin isn't Romeo, do you know? I think I might agree. It's a deal. Cross my heart. It's terrible for me that I can She's prepared to start. She's quite prepared to start. The stars, the stars, prepare to start. Diva, diva, a million gratitudes. You saved the day. Get her back into her costume. Places, everybody. I'm sorry I shouted at you earlier. It's because I like you. We'll be starting with the jewel song if you want to prepare anything. Somebody find her a score and send Madame Giri to me immediately. No so-called ghost gets the better of me. Ha! Oh, Claude, we'll think of another part for you instead of Romeo. And what's that other opera? Pagli, Pagli. Archie. Bless you. Ridi Pagliaccio Sultama Rein Franta Ridi dal duol Che t'avelena il cor Bugger off! Ah, there you are, Madam Jury. I'll watch the remainder of the performance from my usual box, if you don't mind, box five. And La Colotta will continue in the role of Marguerite. Oh, he'll soon find out who sings like a toad around here. I keep warning them. Don't provoke him, I say, but does anybody listen? They do not. God knows what'll happen tonight. God knows. some vital new information concerning the ghost. I don't be ridiculous. But father, something terrible's happened. And something terrible's going to happen on stage if this goes wrong. What's Christine doing? What do you think she's doing? She's singing the jewel song for us. But surely Carlotta's doing Marguerite tonight. Carlotta is miming the role. Your girlfriend's singing for her down there. Now shut up.
to kill her. I think she's fainted. Christine, what's happened to her? She appears to be drugged, father. Then who is making those extraordinary <laughs> <laughs> her nodules. All I want is one nice, normal performance. Is that asking too much? Not really, sir. And all because of a fallacious phantom whose very existence is being perpetuated by a trickster who only wants a free box every evening and his girlfriend singing Marguerite. Well, he's not going to make me do it, Remy, because he doesn't frighten me. Nothing frightens me. Oh, God, what is it, Madame Shady? I have another letter for you, sir, from him. How dare him? Heads are going to roll for this, Madame Giri, and yours could very well be the first. Dear Mr. Richard, the shock of poor Carlotta's accident, underlined again, has reminded me that you have not yet paid me my allowance of 20,000 francs for this month. Accordingly, I have instructed Madame Giri to follow a different procedure on this occasion. Yours faithfully, OG. <laughs> His allowance, indeed. Well, this time the thief's gone too far, because this time we shall catch him. Would you mind awfully telling me what this different procedure is, Madame Jury? I don't see why not. Acting under our ghost's instructions, I extracted 20,000 francs from this month's income from the boxes, which I then gave to Mr. Remy. You did what? Those, sir, were my instructions to slip the money into Mr. Remy's pocket when he wasn't looking. Needless to say, I did it easy. So, Remy, it too, Judas, mine own faithful servant, a worm in the apple. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Is this the pocket, <clears throat> Madame Jerry? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Empty. Well, Remy, what have you got to say for yourself? I swear I know nothing about it, sir. You must. Otherwise, how is the money spirited from your pocket? Well, perhaps there is a ghost. I'm sick of tired of saying there's no such thing. Unless, of course, the ghost wafted it out of your pocket and put it into it. Something the matter, sir. Received with thanks the sum of 20,000 francs OG. Oh, gee. Is there anything we can do, sir? Hmm? Oh, no, 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 Remy, just, just... Uh, Carry on, sir. Yeah, 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 yes, that would be fine. Uh, oh, and incidentally, you'd better put Miss Daye's name in the programme. Programme, yeah. She'll be singing Marguerite tomorrow. It always gets them like that, the first time, when they discover he really does exist. on the roof at this time of the night. I might ask you the same. I've worked here for years. They let me do as I please now. Oh, uh, I wouldn't stay too late if I were you. It uh, gets a bit ni ni nippy this high up. Birdies. 
Christine. Oh, Ra, it's you. What are you doing up here? Come back down. No. Everything down there belongs to him. I know that now. I've known it ever since you spoke to me in the graveyard. Until then, I thought it was only a dream. Christine, I don't understand. Listen, and I'll tell you. It was the night Mephistopheles was killed. The night you came to my dressing room. When I heard you talking to your angel of music. Yes. He came to comfort me, or so I thought. It had all been so awful. And then a strange thing happened, something I'd never seen before. The mirror began to spin, faster and faster. And all of a sudden, I was on the other side. I was there. Where, Christine? I don't know. It was so dark. But Caesar was there too. The white horse had vanished, and standing beside him, this mysterious figure. What did he look like? I couldn't tell. He wore a mask. You must understand. I thought I was dreaming. How is it possible unless it were a dream? You must tell me, Christine. It's perfectly safe. We're quite alone. Tell me about your dream. He put me up onto Caesar's back and led me down. Down through strange traps and corridors. Sometimes, in the distance, I could see men working at boilers or gas lamps, but they never seemed to see us. We went down, further down, until we came to a lake. Raal, there is a lake look below the opera house. There's an island on it, and that's where he lives. Forgive me, Christine, but I can't. It's true. Believe me. He wanted me to stay with him forever! The swine! No, Raoul, he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. It breaks my heart. Christine. Oh, no, Raoul, I told him I couldn't stay, and he did let me go. But only after I promised to sing Marguerite for him one last time. And then I seemed to wake up in my dressing room, as if from a dream. It was only when you told me that you had found it empty that I began to suspect. And when I heard his voice and the chandelier fell, I knew it was no dream. And there was no angel of music. The man was real. And who else could he be but the one we call the Phantom of the Opera? Christine, I'm going to take you away from all this danger. No! I must keep my promise. Mr. Richard has asked me to sing Marguerite tomorrow, and I must. Then, after the performance, will you come away with me then? Yes. It's for the best. Poor phantom. Poor little ghost. How can you pity the creature? The man's mad. Mad with love. And yet, I can't return it. All of my love is for you. <sighs> what was that? Just the wind. It's all right. We're quite alone.
Come, my coach will be at the rear of the building immediately after the performance tomorrow. And then we shall be gone, far away from this devilish place.